Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to the power of the Ancients dev stream. It's not patch of the Ancients as Lalta likes to call it sometimes. But it kind of is. It's kind of an ancient level patch, so it's an expansion. Yeah. It's pretty dope. I'm excited uh, to start talking about it here today. There's a lot of features we got to go through. Uh, joining me for the first time on dev stream is Jose. Viegas. You got it. Did I do it? <laughs> it doesn't matter. No? Matter. It doesn't matter. Viegas? Yeah, you got Viegas. it. Viegas? Hey, guys. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm Jose, uh, <laughs> one of the designers here at Diddy2, and then, yeah, it's going to be hype. We're going to be talking about the new features on the expansion, and yeah, I'm excited about it. So, yeah, let's get yeah, it rolling. Gonna be sick. So, just starting off, uh, today we're giving away the Plexus Monk costume that's coming out with the expansion update. Uh, you can check it out on stream right now. Eric's showing it off, uh, you know, in our new... Well, not new, but returning Christmas-themed uh, private tavern. So this is the skin we'll be giving away. The hashtag is hashtag POTA, I think. P-O-T-A for Power of the Ancients. Uh, Alec will be throwing it. Lalta will be throwing it in the uh, chat for you guys. So definitely put that in. Um, I'm sure like it'll have the caps and all that. So just type it in the same way that you read it, and you'll have a chance to win the Plexus Monk skin. Uh, and we'll be sending those codes out when the expansion launches on Tuesday, December 12th. Um, Dope. So, yeah, it's going to be sick. So what's coming in the expansion, just to give you guys kind of like the quick bullet point rundown. First off, the new returning reigning champion game mode Onslaught is coming back. Uh, the long-awaited. So, so excited about <laughs> Onslaught, man. It's truly... It's going to be sick. Truly massive. Uh, and then the biggest map we've ever made that also changes every time you play, called the Lost Temple, is also coming out. And then also an additional system called Ancient Power and boatloads of new like cosmetics and rewards and things to get and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to start off by going straight into talking about Onslaught. Magical transition. <laughs> like, we'll have to make yeah. up some like transition music yeah. for the next did, one. Did, did, is that, <laughs> does that actually play music? I don't, I don't think so. So we'll just uh, we'll improv it next time. All right. So right now Eric's kind of showing off the Christmas decorations and stuff has come back to the hub. The hub has obviously changed quite a bit. Uh, there's a lot of new decorations. There's also some new changes brought with the expansion. Uh, the new entrance to Onslaught, as well as a new uh, NPC, Mana Node, is here. He is the guy that you've noticed just along the campaign and stuff like that. He's, he pops up usually over the chest of mana in every map when you're defending. Um, so now he's here, and he's actually the NPC that you'll activate and gain ancient power from, which we'll talk about kind of later in the stream. So first we kind of wanted to talk about Onslaught and, you know, what it, what it has, what it's like, what you do you know, how it works, because it's definitely a very different game mode than the old Onslaught. And the old Onslaught used to have, like, you know, weird uh, three three waves per section thing that would, like, slowly increase to high numbers and just, like, scale up on one map. Uh, and this Onslaught is totally, totally different. Uh, so we'd like to tell you a little bit about how it works. So Jose was really the head designer on the feature, uh, he definitely worked with me and Eric and, and we worked hard on kind of like making it, uh, you know, scale well and, and be really fun for you guys. And Jose really focused on a lot of like the numbers and the balancing and like making things actually work and make sense. Um, so I'm going to have him tell you a little bit about uh, maybe the different pieces that go along with the game mode. So you want to kind of tell us yeah, about maybe the no. first piece? On that note... Send all of your hate mail directly towards to me. So Just so yeah, Exclusively to me. <laughs> I am more than willing to take it and receive it. Wow. TMI. TMI. <laughs> Before that, though, I'm extre extremely confused that the microphone sitting on something that says fancy tea time. I don't know why. Well, yeah, where the, where this coming from? But anyways. Let's it's go just a magical it. table. It's just a magical don't table. Don't ask questions. All right. <laughs> All right, so seriousness, onslaught. Uh, the primary concerns that we that, that we essentially we took into when making onslaught was to have the game to provide the game, the players with a fresh experience every time you jump in, and that is tied to all the systems that we're going to be talking about throughout the stream. But then primarily now, let's talk about the schedules, and that's like one of the huge parts about the game mode where 
we, uh, players already have the expectations of how the schedules should be when they're playing uh, all of the game modes that we've made now. Maybe like, we should take a yes. step back and explain what a schedule is. Like, oh, <laughs> right. So what is a schedule? My bad. <laughs> so a schedule is essentially the group of enemies that you're seeing through the game modes that you've been playing. So when you play a campaign, there's a group of enemies that are coming through. When you're playing any any given chaos difficulty, there's the, we're not essentially calling schedules the group of mm -hmm. enemies that you're seeing when you play a map. Uh, whereas in mastery or in trials or in in a in campaign, so <clears throat> uh, one of the things that that you guys are very familiar with is that in each one of those game modes, the schedules, as, as I'm calling them, they're pretty much the same across the board in the map. So when you play Chaos One, you know that there's going to be uh, the vanguards, and that's pretty much all you're going to be facing in that game mode. And then as as, as you go in through trials, you'll see different schedules, but pretty much all contained within one context. And the cool thing about Onslaught now is that whenever you jump in, you should be expecting to see enemies for, for, for all, that have multiple varieties. So you jump in and then one lane may have the vanguards, a different one may have uh, cyborgs, a different one may have uh, berserker orcs. So essentially now before- A different one might be all ogres. The, the other one may be all ogres. <laughs> The other <laughs> might be called game ogre. Game ogre, yeah, that's that. It's, it's one of the very challenging ones that we made at the very end. Is only ogres, and then and it's only like yeah, we have like the tiny ogres, and then the three like ogres from incursions. So yeah, it's gonna be oh, there's one that's like only goblins, and then it's like we in the only goblin one, there's like we put literally every goblin that we've ever put in the game, in like in the game at all. Like there's like there's like the dudes from from like the tutorial, like show up in that one. <laughs> And they did some training, man. So they're not they're they not playing around. Yeah, they get substantially beefier and bluer. Mm -hmm. Remember they're blue. Anyways, uh, so yeah, so when you jump into onslaught, you will see all these various uh, schedules that are essentially taken from enemies all across the D two. It's not just like the ones from trials. You'll see some enemies from incursions, uh, and then essentially that leads you into essentially facing each lane as its own threat. Mm -hmm. So, wh whereas before, you could essentially plan ahead to essentially have one build that will be sufficient to complete the whole map. Now you have to individually address and assess the situation for each one of the lanes that you're facing. And that's probably my personal favorite thing about it is that it's like, it, it challenges your expectations every time you jump in. It, every, every time you jump in, you need to like uh, evaluate what's happening, what are the schedules that you're going to be facing, and what is the best combinations of the tools that you have at your disposal to deal with those. Yeah, it's going to be very different from trials, where you know trials would yeah. just be the same kind and group of groups of enemies that be coming from everywhere, and one defense would just work against. And them. then you kind of know essentially yeah. you jump into trials, and then you know okay, this is what I'm going to be seeing. This is what I what I know it works. So yeah. you kind of like turn your brain off. And this is definitely not the case in Onslaught. You gotta be very active, right? You need to be able to essentially s identify the individual threats that you're gonna be seeing in each one of the lanes and essentially what's best for that context. So then, in addition to the different enemy schedules, we also made a system c that we're calling Mutators. It's yeah. not really, well, it's not really a new system, it's an evolution of the Mutator yeah. system that we used to have in the game. So, so you wanna tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so the Mutators, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys have, uh, if you've been playing the game for a little bit, you, you're, You'll be familiar with them. They're essentially the they're essentially the modifiers, the enemies that are coming from each lane. So they, they've been in in, on, in in trials that have been at some point or another. I know that they've been used in other game modes. I know that some of the incursions use them. Like there's the um, what's it, the, the the chrome. Well, the old version of them. Was yeah, they, yeah, being used when it used to be like speedy or yeah. pro blood or <clears throat> yeah. So essentially, it's pretty boring. much like thinking uh, in terms of those. But we definitely like took those like to eleven to like twelve. <laughs> oh damn! So yeah, no, they, right. they've definitely been cranked. Like yeah, like one of the things I was talking about in the devlog that we made is that a couple of months ago when we were thinking about because like if you guys were, I don't know like that that post is like several several months ago so we've definitely been thinking this for a while and then one of the things that we asked the community is like hey what kind of ideas did you do you have for mutators kind of like the ones that you already accustomed with. And then, yeah, you guys made up some really interesting uh, uh, contributions to that, and we definitely took this into account. So, um, we, I mean, we, we want you to know that, like, we definitely take your input seriously, and this is, like, 
as much your game mode as it is ours in that sense. Yeah, we definitely got a, a lot of really good feedback from our testing groups, um, from our remote you know, QA group and yeah. the remote play testing group. Definitely a big thank you to all the testers that came and got involved with Onslaught. It, just in any amount that you could, uh, we really took a lot of the feedback and really kind of honed it to make it way more enjoyable just in general. For sure. So, talking about the mutators, so you jump into the map, each lane is going to have a different set of enemies that are, that are going to be spawning from that lane. And then on top of that, you add the... Well, that may be too loud. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> on top of that, you get the mutators that add an extra flavor to them. So the mutators will, I mean, uh, should inform you essentially on how to appropriately combat, uh, like, yeah, essentially, like, beat that lane. It's not like something that's, like, truly, like... It's not gonna essentially tell you like you must do this or not do anything else. It's more like this is kind of something that the enemies are specializing in this lane, and then if you essentially if you're mindful of that as you're making your builds, you'll be able to in some way like take advantage of it. So when do those show up in onslaught? Do you like so, just load in and they'll just RNG no, mutators and schedules? You no, know, in everywhere. So how it is is that I, I know that onslaught is like a it's like a there's a lot of systems involved, and then. We're gonna be talking about the Lost Temple later, but essentially, like the, the one of the things I really like about Onslaught is that it, it is scales alongside you. So everything is like you're dipping your toes a little bit, just just to see how the water feels, like too cold, too hot, and then as you go on, <laughs> that's like, my experience with Onslaught. Of course, yeah. yeah. So as you go along, you're gonna see more and more <laughs> things. So uh, you gotta see like uh, ske like like I said before, like we're using the term schedule. So essentially, you're gonna see groups of enemies. Uh, of different difficulty and increasing difficulty. So first you're gonna see only the Vanguard, so eventually you'll have like <clears throat> the Cobalts. Um, and then the same with the, the, with the Mutators, right? So as you mm -hmm. go along with Onslaught, at first only like, uh, uh, actually at the beginning, there's like no Mutators for you to worry about, so you can essentially get the feel for the different schedules per lane, but eventually you'll start seeing one Mutator per lane. Uh, and in only one lane, so I say, oh, there's like one mutator only in this lane, so this lane's like beyond the schedule, has this unique mutator that I have to take into account. So, but the, the, the longer you progress in the floors in Onslaught, you'll see like two mutators now, and three mutators. So uh, uh, the maximum amount of mutators that you'll see, so we're talking about like in-game Onslaught, like truly like the, the biggest challenge that you'll see is that there's gonna be uh, two mutators per lane at maximum. Uh, so it, it'll essentially it'll crank up for from none to two per lane at maximum, including arrow lanes too. So how did you how did you make the kind of the progression of like how do they work in terms of unlocking like as you go and and enemy schedules like do you just again is it just like you'll get a bunch at certain points or like is it kind of like spread out over time like how does the how does the kind of progression of getting harder work? Right. In terms of the in terms of the schedules, yeah, like I said, so as as you go as you go along, you're gonna be essentially unlocking schedules, and we're also we're we're using uh, trials as as a reference point for like the strength of the enemies. So roughly, this is not like one to one, but essentially like roughly, let's say when you're in Chaos One, if you go to Onslaught at a floor that's comparable to Chaos One, you mm -hmm. should be seeing like vanguards, and then uh, the same thing when you move into like. Uh, Chaos 2, if you if you are roughly, at, the enemies are roughly at that level of strength, you'll be seeing uh, essentially the introduction of the um, the orcs of, from Chaos 2. In the same way, the mutators, we, we essentially internally define them by difficulties, and then we're also introducing them at a pace that makes sense. So, so and it's not just going to like be all those chaos enemies when you get to that range. No, right? no, no, no. Like, no, how no, does that no. Work? So yeah, so so essentially, the, one of the cool things about the, the essentially the system that we made is that we're able to evaluate the strength of a schedule based on the strength of the enemies and not so much from their unique level, uh, as in like numerical like level. So, if you are at the end of onslaught, you may still be seeing schedules that have uh, vanguards and. Uh, um, hammer orcs or any of the any of the chaos enemies that you are accustomed to so it's not going to be exclusively whatever is, is at that comparable difficulty but you you are going to essentially be facing every enemy that we've ever made uh, or close to I mean there's there's actually we're pulling enemies from incursions so you, you truly mm -hmm. have to be a master of DD2 to uh, 
pull I mean, push further into the floor in onslaught. So yeah, alongside the new schedules, we're introducing the the mutators that essentially you uh, at first you're gonna be seeing the easier ones, and then alongside that cranking up the difficulties, you're gonna see more mutators and more difficult ones. So what is the floor progression like? I know we keep talking yeah. about it, but how does it work? You know, how do you do it? How do you unlock more floors? What does it mean? So in onslaught, you start from a, it's essentially like a, a, a I mean I, I think about it as like a, as a tower. Uh, and I think it's a good analogy. So you start from like floor one essentially, and then every floor represents uh, any number of maps. So mm -hmm. the, the number of maps per floor is, is set, and it goes from one to three. So essentially, when you're in the floor, you complete the whatever number of maps there is in that floor, and then you unlock the next floor, and then so on and so on. So it's a it's very linear progression. So it, one of the things that we that we've noticed is that when you're playing through trials. Sorry. When you're playing through trials, there's a not a um, very easy, easily identifiable way to know essentially how many times you should play like Chaos mm -hmm. 1 maps until you jump to Chaos 2 maps, or Chaos 2 maps until you jump to Chaos 3 maps. So the good, the good thing about Onslaught is that you essentially know for a fact uh, what you should be playing because that's essentially the latest map that you have unlocked. So if you go from like floor one to floor two, you know that the next one you gotta be playing is floor three. And then sure, maybe you'll, uh, once it gets like more difficult, I'm sure that people will be failing some of the maps, but then that doesn't mean that they're doing anything wrong. That just means that they gotta like try to play the, the floor again. Mm -hmm. uh, and then yeah, so essentially like, I don't know if you, if you wanna talk about late game onslaught or do you wanna, should we talk about that Maybe. later? So late game onslaught. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. It's like uh, unintended scoop. <laughs> so late game onslaught, we're defining essentially the point where the enemies are going to be reaching a level of strength that you haven't seen anywhere in the game before. So th their, their, essentially their, their power is greater than Chaos 7 and anything that you have seen. So below the end game that we're calling for onslaught, you're going to see essentially that um, that variation of one, two, three maps per floor, essentially it's just to get you familiar with it. But end game onslaught, where that's the point where you have truly the maximum amount of complexity on the map due to, uh, on the, on the game mode, sorry, due to the, the number of meters that you have available, due to the number of schedules that you have available. Uh, at that point, the enemy is going to keep getting stronger beyond essentially what the, the current mode, uh, point of the game right now. But you're gonna still gonna be able to essentially keep pushing those floors, and then at that point, it's gonna be truly a, a, a um, uh, an encouragement for you to try at like min maxing your build, seeing seeing how many little ways you can keep getting stronger, so you can keep pushing those floors, and uh, essentially, of course, bringing up your buddies to help you alongside. Like onslaught is is uh, very much so thought as a multiplayer system. Uh, in the same way that each one of the maps, you're gonna be facing different schedules and different enemy types. That's very much so with the intention in mind that, like, for example, if you and I play together, you're gonna be thinking about like, okay, my build's really good against like shield geodes, and I'm like, okay, my shield, my, my build's gonna be really good against like these kinds of enemies. So it's a, it's sort of as a multiplayer experience. So when you're trying to push the end end game onslaught, you're also gonna be thinking about the things that you can min max in order to keep pushing those floors. But it's also to say it's not just multiplayer. No, of I mean, course you can not. Definitely of course go not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Solo. There's gonna definitely gonna be a yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah. It's not, it's not exclusively multiplayer, I didn't mean to convey <laughs> that, but it, it's uh, something that we're definitely thinking about when making the game. Yeah, mm -hmm. You can definitely play on your own and then just like show how awesome you are at DD2 and you're the best builder. So yeah, no, that's definitely out there for you to try and challenge yourself. So what's your favorite thing about the mode? My favorite thing about the mode? No, it's, I think it's got to be the map, but we're going to talk about <laughs> it later. So uh, aside from that, I just think like the... the, the, the my favorite thing about it is just truthfully just how like the uniqueness and every time you jump in, <coughs> um, it's it's a different experience. Like I'm I'm mm -hmm. huge into like like I don't know like if you want to be technical, I'm huge into like procedural generation systems. Mm -hmm. So having a system that essentially like evolves alongside you is very interesting and very very rewarding to build and see it come to fruition. Cool. So I think we're gonna go ahead and start moving into the lost temple section. Sure. So we can't wait to show that off to you. Magical Lost Temple transition music. It's the coolest of all time. It's Lost Temple. Lost Temple. <laughs> so that was our uh, Magical Lost Temple theme song. Oh. So I know you didn't know about it. I didn't. That was a surprise for me. Was, 
So Jose is going to be creeping on us uh, behind our backs, you know. I'll be here. <laughs> I'll, I'll just be here. Like, he originally here. wanted to shove me out of this, but I'm like, nah, man, I'm just going to stay until the yeah. end. Yeah, we just wanted to reject you. We're like, we tried, nah. tried to move, man. Center yeah. of gravity, though, is perfect. We're, it's perfect. Has, has there ever been three people in the stream? Is that, is that a new thing? See, what people don't know is that we're all on, like, a balancing board, so the yeah. center of gravity is, like, a big deal. That's true. You know, it's because, like, at any point, we could fall over. <laughs> at any point. Whole studio. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Everything. Almost, you almost all got me. All, <laughs> got me. all right, so we want to talk a little bit about our new map, The Lost Temple. So Eric now has loaded up into this new map. Uh, this is the biggest map we've ever created. It's insane. By a lot. And it's also just like, I mean, you can even just look at the mini map. I mean, the mini map's pretty bananas yeah. by itself. Ridiculous. So we'd like to talk about it a little bit. Um, so just kind of go into how did we like how did we build it and like you know block it out and start kind of thinking about the map as a whole. And I know Jose, you had a lot to do with kind of how the map was built and how we were thinking about it. So what were kind of some of the things we were thinking about while while starting to put it together? So we really wanted a so we really wanted a map that essentially would be a good tie-in with all the variations that we've been talking about with the schedules and the mediators and mm -hmm. we we felt that a map that essentially evolved alongside the player was really a good tie-in for that so essentially when you jump into into the map you may see all these options that with the with the lanes that may open and with all the cores that you can see but essentially like i said not all of them are going to be open at the same time right mm -hmm. because oh, otherwise it just would be literally impossible but essentially the expectation is that whenever you load into the in, into the um, lost temple um you're going to be see different lanes getting open all the time and essentially also those lanes have different like weaknesses i guess like inherent mm -hmm. to like just how lanes work right so some lanes may be better to use certain kind of defenses or different lanes will essentially work differently uh and then yeah that's essentially like the main part of it that every essentially like whenever you jump in there's going to be different lanes open and alongside different cores yeah so just to reiterate each time you load into this map the cores and lanes will be different yeah we'll be chosen differently yeah different ones will be open and available different cores to defend different kind of setups that you have to you know build defenses against so it's really cool, like unique gameplay every time. Yeah. And then not to mention, it's like on top of the lanes and cores being different, all the enemies are going to be different <laughs> yeah. too. With and the then mutators. might even have mutators that will also be different. So there's like many layers of kind of uh, shifting gameplay in this map. And it's really awesome. I'm really proud of how it ended up and kind of got executed and... You know, everything works kind of together right now, coherently. What I'm really excited about the game mode in general is that uh, we know that, the, that you're very passionate about the game, and we want to essentially provide you with a playground for you to try out, uh, for you to get essentially as much rewarding experiences from the time that you want to put into it, right? So because previously you could just grind on Flood 7, or oh, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. you can grind Chaos 7, or you can grind Chaos 6, and essentially the experience will be roughly the same all, every time. But we really wanted to provide you guys with the with an experience that was like fun, no matter how many time, how many hours you put into it. Every time you jump into the game, it should be something that's challenging and entertaining. So we truly we made the game with you guys in mind. So we, you want to talk about maybe the Eric? If you look at the spawns or something, you want to talk about what the kind of the flashing lights are over the oh, yeah. the enemy lanes. So. If you look at the flashing lights, there's like those are uh, some useful ways that we essentially helping you find out which lanes are active and which lanes are inactive. So when you jump into the map, all lanes are gonna be essentially flashing orange because they are essentially new lanes that have opened. So if if a, if a, if a lane essentially is flashing orange, it means that there's something coming from there that you have not taken into account yet. Of course, jump fresh into the map. Every lane is orange because you haven't build anything. Every, yeah. not every lane. No, 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 no. sorry. <laughs> no. Not every lane that's open, the, the, out of the ones are open. So if it's dark, it means it's it's closed, you don't have to worry about that one. So from the lanes that are open, not only are you going to see the billboards and there's lines coming from them, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the wisps, uh, but you're also going to see the, the glowing orange eyes. So that's way a, for, a way for you to know, it's like, hey, I need to address that lane. Uh, once you move into combat phase, once you set up all your defenses around the, the lanes individually, those uh, uh, bright orange eyes are going to turn green. 
So that's a way for you to know that, hey, like this is a lane that I've already taken care of for the most part. Uh, and then if you're playing uh, high enough in Onslaught where new lanes will open as you play through the map, then those lanes will start appear with glowing orange eyes in, uh, alongside the other ones. Wait, say that one more time. What happens? Yeah. In higher levels of Onslaught? <laughs> what? what? During this map? What? <laughs> yeah, so a lot, eventually you'll reach a point in Onslaught where new lanes is just like going to open alongside the uh, the other ones that are already open. So when so, do they open? Do they open in the middle of combat no, phase? No, so, so yeah, so let, let's essentially make, make it clear with all of these rules, right? So they're not going to get open in the middle of combat phase. They're going to be open in, in a build phase where you have plenty of time to address the new threats. And the, the, the one of the things that we were very careful about is that whenever a new lane gets open, the amount of mana that you get from the enemies and the amount of mana that you get from chests will essentially scale up to that so it makes sense for you to actually build up those extra lanes and get open. So the amount of DU, that, uh, the, the amount of D, well, uh, the amount of the, uh, defense units that you can put, put in a map would also race alongside it. So if you're playing a map and then a new lane gets open, you're gonna have a greater cap of DU to spend in that map. So it, mm -hmm. let's say that I, I think it's like roughly 200 per extra lane. So if, you, if you're playing in a map and you had 700 DUs, it's like a smaller like variation or onslaught like a new link gets open, now you're gonna have 200 more for you to spend in that map. So yeah. you should probably spend those 200 in the new one that get open, right? But also we want you to be confident that whenever we essentially pre present you with a new challenge, we're gonna give you the tools for you to essentially accomplish that challenge uh, through giving you extra uh, limit on the number of, uh, of the defense that you can build and giving you more mana in the chest and from the enemies. So then what's your favorite part of the map? Oh, yeah, it's, <laughs> I guess it's like really hard to say like one individual thing, but uh, I just like, I really like the glowing eyes, dude. It's like, like I, I, we put a lot of like... Who did that? I did, I did that. <laughs> I did, I just, oh. Is that what you're talking about? Just making sure. Yeah, yeah. Just making sure. sure. Yeah, I see I, how I, it is. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of my favorite things about it. It's like, it's something like simple that it's not like super in your face, but it's like really helpful for you to know essentially what's active, what's not active, and what's gonna get open again. So now if you, you yeah, if you watch Eric playing, all of those lanes have like the green eyes highlighted because they're essentially lanes that you've already. So they're just open now. Yeah. Also, like whenever a new lane's open, you're also gonna see the message of like new enemies incoming or something along those lines. So mm -hmm. essentially you're gonna, you're gonna know for a fact that something new is happening. It's not gonna be like, a surprise or hopefully it's not but yeah there's like so many cues for you to find out like the new things are happening in the map so you're definitely gonna have enough time and resources for you to address those things I mean, I'm just pumped about this map honestly I think the inside of the temple itself is like the coolest oh, place like and you can even like run and build on the like light bridges that are in yeah. there it's so sick. There's like sometimes you'll get an air lane coming through. And you can set up some sky guards like on this ring that Eric's going around right now. Oh, there's the. That's probably like one of my favorite spots oh, yeah. to like build some stuff on. There's a little elevator on the other part of the map. Mm -hmm. That one's cool too. It's a water wheel that'll kill you. The water wheel will kill you. Yep. Like I think everybody that's played this map <laughs> has died no, from no. it at some point. It is super risky. <laughs> don't don't jump on it. <laughs> Just don't do it. Eric's like, I'm a pro right now. I'm a pro water wheel skater boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's your new your new title. Is water wheel skater boy. But yeah, we have an elevator that works and detects when you come up to it. It'll help bring you up and kind of traverse and also bring you down. Yeah. It's a nice elevator. <laughs> it's much nicer than we are. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what? But yeah, so we just wanted to show everyone this map. Uh, we hinted at it last time on the dev stream. Uh, I think we showed like one, we had one picture of maybe like one quarter of yeah. it last time. Oh wait, uh, so is it the first time that we've seen the map? This is the first time yeah. we're ever showing the map. Oh man. wow, this is a yeah. huge deal guys. So this, this really like, it's split in almost like four quadrants, which I really like. And sometimes quadrants were like, the lanes will interact with cores in different quadrants so like you have the kind of the temple quarter of the map which is this interior that eric's exploring now you have kind of the front of the temple entrance that he's out with the uh, the water like the cavern waterfall and some of these uh lanes that are opening up from the like the extra building that's on the side and there's also like a 
a pe- lane that comes from the bottom and comes up and around. No. And then, so this, this is like one quarter over here. There's a couple little lane entrances and stuff like that. You got the water wheel and all that. You have a lane up here too. Uh, and then you kind of have this like hut and bridges area. I was almost like, this is like an ancient villagey area with like little hut entrances yeah. that enemies will come out of. You have the portal that actually is linked to uh, the one in the hub. So that when you go through the portal that's now in the Heroes Marketplace, uh, it'll you know you can obviously see that oh look it's the same portal it <laughs> took you here, um, but really just to kind of show like this is what you stepped into an onslaught. It's really this like underground magical realm you know where reality shifts and this echoes of your past battles and it's really sweet. All the rules are different in this mode. I cannot wait to see people start playing this. Um, so we're really excited about this new map. And I don't even know what else to say about it. I just want people to play it. I'm, yeah. super, like, I'm super focused on Aaron playing right now. I was like, he was about just to watch it. I was yeah. like, he was about to. I'm like, he's losing stuff. He's about to get like, no, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like old dev streams with butter, rip butter. I miss him. These guys like don't even know who I'm talking about, no, and now no, I'm sad. No, I'm sad. Actually, most people probably don't know what I'm talking about, so that's fine. It was just an old community guy that used to be the like be the one playing the game on streams, and would just chain lose all the time. <laughs> that I before I started working here, I would literally join him on dev streams as a player to help carry him, so he wouldn't lose. And I'm like, no, don't lose now. Here, I'll build. Don't worry about it. Like, just don't lose. I'll do this. Everything will be okay. <laughs> Did you guys show uh, the, the tentacle on the on the pillar? I think so. I mean, he's run by him a couple times. They're really, like, those weird, are, like, yeah, alien th- Those are really creepy, man. Like, they, yeah. give, they give me the creeps. Look at those things. <laughs> it's like, too spooky. That's a natural, man. It's, it's, it's a natural. too much. <laughs> too real. Too real? <laughs> Damn. I didn't, you know, I've never thought about our game as too real, but I don't have to rethink my life. I've heard about it. Unreal. This is real life. Unreal. Get out. <laughs> Just get out. <laughs> You're done. Uh, so we want to transition into talking about our next system, so another thing coming with the power of the Ancients expansion, Ancient Power. Ooh. Want me some Ancient Power. We made a cool Ancient Power, it's giving you all the strength, you're going to be awesome and powerful. It See, may, we did it. It may be ancient as well. It may be ancient. <laughs> You'll be the ancientest <laughs> boy. Ooh. Oh, the new title. Oh, that should have been the title. Ancientest boy. messed up. ancient boy. Person, yeah. who, person who gets the furthest in Onslaught becomes the ancient East boy. I mean, they will in our hearts. In our hearts. And that's oh, yeah. what matters. <laughs> so, that's the most important part of it. So, uh, do you want to explain how people will get to Ancient Power first? Yeah. So, Ancient Power... And then we'll talk about what it is. There we go. It is truly for the chosen ones. <laughs> <laughs> Just the chosen just ones. The chosen yeah, I'm ones. just letting you think about it. Anyways, Ancient Power <laughs> is a system that we made for you so you can grow even more ridiculously strong. Stronger than you are now. Stronger, maybe? Stronger. I'm about getting just stronger. Saying. So, Ancient Power, I'm just like, how much do they know about it? Like, they like, know squat. Yeah, they, know, they know the words. So Ancient let's power. let's talk about it a little bit because it's actually it's probably the one of the more complex parts of this expansion. So essentially, it's it's more of a longer term progression goal, yeah. and it's a way to do. I mean, at a high level, it's a way to do a limited reset of your account in order to gain get some permanent gains. And there's a number of stuff that it gives you. Um, so you're gonna kind of run through like yeah. what you get. So essentially, uh, ancient power when you activate it, uh, like it, like Colin said, it's like a small, I guess like partially reset on your account, and then you're not trashing all of your stuff. Like why? I just want to be very clear that that's what's happening. It essentially takes your gear and then like, like D level set to like the end of campaign difficulty so essentially like when you when you trigger the ancient power you will gonna be set back to the first it's a way to like slot. reset and do the end game progression again yes yeah. so it's just like for you to like try again the end game progression yeah. uh and then uh, in, in order for you to trigger it there's uh, a couple conditions that you must satisfy uh the first one is that you must reach the end game of onslaught so which is we're calling essentially like the ancient power floor so once you reach that floor 
uh, you are gonna be allowed to like essentially get the ancient power from mana mananode. Mananode. <laughs> Man from mana. Mananode. There's just a couple of nas in there. Just so nas. that's one of the conditions that you must satisfy. The other condition that you must satisfy is that you must have obtained at least 150 ascension. So yeah. you reach the essentially end game of onslaught at uh, I think right now we set it to floor 65. So you need to reach floor 65. Whoa, spoilers. Woo! 65. <laughs> Anyway, you reach floor 65. Is that how high Onslaught goes? No. Oh, oh. Glad that you asked. <laughs> <laughs> onslaught increases infinitely. Like, truly, there's, like, as much... You'll get... You'll see number 999 <laughs> and more. <laughs> if you put Good on, luck. Good luck, boy. Anyway, Challenge accepted? Yeah, dude, for real. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, so you, if you reach floor 65... In onslaught, and then on top of that, you have 250 ascension at the minimum. You can essentially trigger your ascension, uh, your your, sorry, your ancient power. And then when you trigger your ancient power, you're gonna be reset back to essentially f floor one of onslaught. Your yeah. gear gonna essentially like scale down with you, so you're not gonna lose any of your gear. You're not gonna lose any of your shards. So essentially, ev everything's gonna be de leveled to that point. So. Uh, more ex more specifically, your everything that has a level pretty much is going to be reset back to level one. So that is your shards, your pets, your upgrade levels. Your upgrade levels, correct. So, but you're still going to be level fifty, so you're gonna have to go back from like level one to fifty again. Uh, so essentially, you, it's a way for you to like, I've killed this game so many times, so I just want to try it again from the beginning of onslaught, and then mm -hmm. click button, and I'll go ahead and do that. But the upside that you get from doing this is that there's like a myriad of benefits that you will that you will be triggering for your account. So mm -hmm. this is not something that like um, just for fun. I mean, it is for fun, but it's, it's not something that you do just for no, nothing, right? This is real life. It is real life. It is real. Yeah. Life. So We're whenever you, whenever you trigger uh, ancient power. So what is ancient power essentially? So ancient power essentially. Uh, um, there's two main ways that you're gaining essentially stronger via ancient power. Number one is through what we're calling the ancient power bu uh, buffs or talents. What is it? What actual, what ancient, power ancient power. Ancient power. Okay. <laughs> yeah, those, okay. They're just called powers. They're just, They're just, just powers. powers. <laughs> They're just called powers. Yeah. It's okay. They're just called powers. So these are essentially buffs for your account that essentially whenever you use the ancient power you get essentially one point for you to allocate in one of those ancient powers yeah. and uh, w no matter which one you select the, the the awesome part about it is that they're shared amongst everybody who's in your party so if i select the power that gives me more defense power or the one that raises the health um, then that's going to be essentially shared across all of your all of your friends mm -hmm. so it, and it stacks like it's not like something that there's like a limit to how many points you can put. I mean, I mean, there's a limit to how many points you can put into them, but there's no. But there's not. Yeah, no. But there is. There might be. <laughs> no, what I mean to say is that uh, if you have a party of four people, all four, all, all four, all four, all, bro, bro, bro. all of the buffs that are owned by those people are going to well be stacked. shared across everyone. That's what I'm trying to say. So if I'm playing with a uh, Lata and uh, with Colin. Then uh, we're gonna be sharing all of our buffs across yep. the, across all. So all if we all have five percent, it's fifteen percent total for yeah. everybody. Wait, that's math. Yeah, I think so. Math. How it's, do I? It's, it's it's done through math. It won't be five five five. Oh, the number of ancient power. Oh. Then yeah, <laughs> I think that's how the song goes. That's, that's how it works. So that's one way of doing it. So you get these buffs that are essentially shared for your whole account. What else do you get in addition to in addition to the buffs that stack yeah. with other players? What so, else do you get? So the other way that we're essentially raising your power is through the the ascension system that you guys are already familiar with. So if you go look at the talents, you guys know that the maximum amount of uh, points that you can put in your talents is 140. So by using the ancient power system, you're gonna be raising the number of uh, points that you can put in the you can put in those ascension talents. Do you have negative ascension points right now? He broke. Okay, he broke okay. it. Good. He, bro right. he broke his profile. That's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> so whenever you trigger ascension, uh, um, whenever you trigger uh, um, ancient power, 
you're going to be essentially gaining uh, some number of races to the number to 140 uh, points that you can put in each one of those talents. And uh, that number is exclusively based on your ascension level at the, at the time you use the ascension, uh, the ancient power, and how high in onslaught you've been, uh, you've been able to reach. So the more you push an onslaught, the highest your ascension is, the more points essentially you'll be allowed to put into the talents in your uh, uh, in your ascension uh, tree uh, after you trigger the ancient power. Also, also, a go party, <laughs> The base at which you start at is also going to raise. What do you mean base? So. It's getting fancy. <laughs> the I'm level just doing like eyebrows. It's like, what are all these things? I mean, I know what all these. things I think are. I might know what they are. Yeah. But but Jose, Jose needs they? to tell us. So the, well, by the base, I mean essentially the your starting ascension level. So whenever you trigger your ancient power, the the farther you have pushed in onslaught, the the highest your ascension that that you had when you triggered the ancient power. The highest your base essentially ascension level will be. The highest you ascension you've gained, and and yes, it's both. The highest floor you've yes, achieved. Yes, yeah, both. Yeah. Yes. So essentially, you can either raise your you can ultimately what it is is like you can raise your base ascension level and uh, your your essentially the cap of your talents mm -hmm. by doing one or two things, which is pushing onslaught and raising and raising your. Uh, essential level. level by the time you trigger the ancient power. And then this is all time highest achieved. This will not reset when you prestige. It's like a, Correct. a count you yeah. know, level. Like This is the highest you've ever pushed. So so let's say that um, I think that, yeah, like if, if I'm trying to like think what's the, like the minimum that you can get, like let's say like it's roughly 10. So let's say that you, you trigger the, the ancient power and you're essentially talent caps raised by 10. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll be at 150. So if you essentially, let's say that you reach that same point and the next time you went through it, uh, you trigger ancient power again, you'll be at 160. So it accumulates across like all of the times you've done it. Yeah. And if you decide to push and farm for ascension and push your floors, you can go through ancient power, and then if you want to do the minimums the next time, you'll still have those. Yeah. So you might want to. You might still keep it. Yeah, you might want to push as far the first time, and then you could just essentially farm as ancient power. Or just gives you a power. permanent boost every time that you gain ancient power yeah. after that. Yeah. Yes. So then, in addition to the ascension level stuff, there's also other permanent gains you'll get on your account that I wanted to mention. So you also get a permanent gold bonus mm -hmm. and a permanent XP bonus. And I think okay. what what these are linked to is not like just every drop in the game, but they're linked to the uh, level like map completion bonuses. Yeah. So pretty much the the areas in which we give you the most XP and gold are the things that are going to be getting boosted from these numbers. And then in addition to those, you also get one of our new ancient power icons. Oh, so yeah. their little icons will actually show wow. up. We added them to the player frames. Other players can see them. They'll actually show up uh, next to your health bar when you're inspecting other players. I think Eric will be able to check out one of our, yeah. there you go, you can even see one of our QA members uh, with one of the icons next to their names. Uh, so this will show up for other players and it's a way to kind of quickly surface what ancient power level you're at. Mm -hmm. And then there's a bunch of these, so it, it scales up for a while, and I think like the maximum one is at like ancient power 100 or something, or maybe even 200. A little bit of time. It's yeah, like, it's, it's going to be a while until you get the last one. Yeah. Um, and they will cause fear in both your friends and foes. <laughs> mostly just friends, though. Yeah. It just frightens your friends. All right. Uh, so, again, so what you get from ancient power is you'll get a new icon uh, next to your name and on your party frame. You'll also get gold and XP bonus. You will raise the amount of ascension you can put into each ascension talent by a number that will scale with kind of how you've done on your progression before you hit ancient power. Uh, and then also you get kind of a base level of ascension that'll increase with your highest achieved floor and your highest achieved ascension level that you've ever gained. And once you kind of increase that base level, every time you hit ancient power, you'll start out with that many ascension levels immediately. And you'll never like start out with you know like zero again from scratch. You will have it, and then you can kind of, so it kind of helps you push through quicker and get to higher ascension levels quicker. As then the XP bonus also kind of helps with that too. Um, and then also you get these ascension powers themselves that you can use to group up with friends. 
uh, and they stack with different people in your party. Also, if like if you don't have any, but your friend has all of them, like you will get all of his buffs. It's not that like you have to have any one power. Uh, they'll they'll transfer to whoever you're playing with, and they stack with just. They'll buff everybody in the party, yeah. essentially. So they'll buff everyone in the party and also stack with each other. Mm, so super they're fast. really sweet, like, multiplayer buffs. But again, you don't, like, have to have multiplayer. You can do everything solo. You can interact with all these systems solo. Uh, we just wanted to kind of give some incentives for, you know, we scale based on players and stuff in a lot of our matches. So mm. we wanted to give some incentives for playing with other people and additional ways that you can gain power by playing with other people and like helping you you know push further and stuff like that for group play because um, that was definitely you know a piece of feedback that we've read for a long long time oh, yeah. was just like more you know uh, incentives for kind of playing with other people and like reasons to group up with other people so we kept that in mind while while building onslaught and like these ancient powers to kind of let you you know have more power with more people um, so then we're probably going to go on ahead into, are we doing our dungeon keeping? Yeah, we're going to do, this is going to be really quick because we got a lot of questions. So quick rundown of, quick rundown of kind of what just happened in the world of Dungeon Defenders 2 and then we're going to go into Q&A, which I'm sure will only be like two questions. It'll be a lot. So we'll, no, so like we'll get through things. One question. Yeah, we might fine. lightning round some I'm questions I'm looking really at them fast. right now. Yeah. So it's like one question. It's one. It, I think that's all we have recorded. Yeah. Perfect. Let's do it. Dungeon keeping. Keep We're gonna keep it dungeons. Dungeons. <laughs> dungeons. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. Go so, ahead, Alex. So uh, with this, with Mastery obviously being the last mode we released, a uh, ton of feedback on that. So look out for some changes down the road. Nothing specifically with the expansion release. Uh, but we have taken note, and uh, now that the races are over, mm -hmm. we can take a look at scaling some stuff back, possibly. Uh, get those get those sweet hyper shards a little bit faster. So Scale it up. Ooh, make, make it, it even harder. Make it harder. No, I'm just you can only do it with five people. Oh. oh. Um, so you just can't do it. <laughs> you just can't do it. Uh, on top of that, uh, people have also been asking about like, item progression stuff, so we are looking at stuff with trials. There will be some inventory, UI, group party stuff, quality of life stuff down the road. Just kind of letting you guys know that we see all the feedback. It's fantastic we stuff to it. read. I don't know if all of it's fantastic. The Major most Major it. I would say 99% of it. Okay, 99%. That's fine. Um, I'll let that slide. And then also possibly some new user stuff down the road. So what? We are, we are paying attention, and we want to make things as great as they can be. So just keep your eyes on that. And with that... We're gonna move on to uh, some community Q and A. We we'll some... move. We'll move on there in a second. I just wanted oh, to you... mention that Mark has definitely something. been reading a lot of feedback oh. and stuff from Mastery. So there's definitely some changes in like quality of life stuff stuff that's coming in the near future for it. So it's not like oh hey we're all about onslaught now even though we are. Mm -hmm. I won't. I won't lie. Yeah. I'm all about the onslaught. <laughs> uh, we do know there's a, there's a lot of things that we could do better with mastery. So mm -hmm. there's definitely many different changes that we're looking at there. And then also we're not forgetting about the other areas of our game, right? About trials, about campaign. Like there's definitely still a bunch of improvements that we're planning to make to all our other features of our game. Yeah. So it's it's not that we're just you know setting and forgetting. Um, Onslaught's going to be a really great add on top of you know the other modes in our game, and we hope it's, that this expansion is really going to add a lot of variety for players to be able to do a number of different things to get loot and good items, and just have more things to do in general uh, with our new game modes and with these new features. Like we we really hope that this expansion is going to add you know a lot more longevity to gameplay because that's really been a huge goal for us with this expansion, <laughs> and and honestly with Eric and I just as like players turned developers, you know we definitely wanted DD two to have more things to do and more reasons to play and things to get, and then I'll even drop a really sexy hint, a spicy hint. There are some rewards for hitting really high levels of onslaught. So it's not, we do have, our gear will still currently cap at Chaos 7 levels, mm -hmm. but the, you know, we have these other ways that you can gain more power to your account, but there are, there are things to get at high levels of Onslaught that'll make you look cool. So you'll have to check those out, yeah. they're pretty dope. 
So I just wanted to drop that little tasty morsel for everyone. That means as we it. as we move into yeah, so definitely play it, <laughs> push high. We're also gonna have a leaderboard that's gonna be for the highest floor achievers. As we well as list. We're gonna make it like a little fancier after the initial launch. Will just be you know who's the highest floor first and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, similar to how we did with mastery with who hit the highest star amount first. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing with onslaught floors. Um, but then we're going to make it a little bit fancier. It'll show, like, teams. It'll show, like, when they did it. Yeah. You know, th we, there were, we had, like, three different leaderboard designs that we wanted to do. Uh, you know, we just, there's a lot of a lot of extra things we wanted to throw in this that we had to cut for time. Um, so we're definitely going to be evolving it more after launch. But we really think, you know, what we're, what we're putting out there in the expansion is going to be awesome. And you guys are going to be really interested in it. So let's go ahead and jump into our Q&A section. I think you want to clarify something. Ooh, community Q and A. There's no time for clarification because it's time for questions. Your questions are right. answers. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just saw somebody asking on chat about like, the, the, like essentially how. That's what we're getting into. That's what this is. That's what this whole section. We're there, right. Jose. Right. We're there. That's what the, the song questions. was. So excited we to sang, ask questions. We just man. sang we a song the, about this. All right. The lyrics are there. <laughs> All right, this is important. The words the so uh, these are some good ones. Uh, will these ancient buffs be accessible outside of onslaught such as C seven? Yes, yes. They will. In fact, changes to mastery down the road are are something we're still looking at, but they'll also affect mastery, so it might make it a little bit easier to get through. So mm -hmm. I think it's like to clarify, like you to get the buffs, you need to play onslaught, but the buffs themselves, you they're they're just like for your account, so you you'll get the benefits like no matter where you are in the game. Yep. Uh, will shards and gear drop from onslaught? They will. Um, so I don't think I was explicit enough when I was talking about the gear earlier, but essentially, like each map will only drop gear of a certain strength, and essentially they'll be they'll they'll it'll increase in strength linearly, right? So the gear in floor one will always be the same strength, and then the gear in floor two will always be the same strength, and then essentially will ri like rise up, right? They'll so go up from there. They'll go up from there, and then so you always know essentially like. What gear should I be wearing? And that is most definitely the gear that you got from the whatever floor you were playing just yeah. now. And then also, you'll be getting more gear from Trials. Correct. We increase the amount of gear drops in Trials, yeah. actually, by a lot. A lot. So while Onslaught will provide more like linear incremental progression between the floors, and it's definitely more you know steady progression, and each floor drops a certain kind of level of loot, then we'll, you know, trials, trials are still the same. There's still a lot we want to do to improve it. But uh, just to make it, you know, still useful and fun and, you know, still rewarding to go back and do, mm -hmm. uh, we increase the amount of loot drops and trials for players. So you get to, we wanted to, you to make it, you know, have a choice between, you know, getting some loot and trials, or maybe if Onslaught just makes more sense to you and it's easier to do because it's more incremental and linear, then you can do that too. It's really up to you at this point. Um, how how you want to progress? Uh, will the percentage of gold and XP bonus be sp be stacked amongst all players within a party? No, no. Yeah. So those only the actual powers themselves that you're putting points into will stack with other players. And then you can also see on the escape screen you can see uh, all the buffs that are currently active, and it will show in little like little green numbers and parentheses like what you're getting from other players. Um, the only place that's turned off right now is the Heroes Marketplace, uh, just because, you know, it would stack with a bajillion people, oh, yeah. and that makes no sense. But uh, everywhere else, Private Tavern, you know, every map and all this stuff, when you're in a party and you're in a game together, uh, you'll see those buffs and you'll see how much the value that you have. This is just a quick answer. Mm -hmm. Will there be 30 second build timers? No. No. <laughs> you won't, you that's won't see a those. mastery only feature. Yeah, those won't be in here. Uh, we answered that DU will be increasing when lanes yep. open up. Yes, they will very much so increase. Yep. Uh, By a million. Uh, what Confirmed. if I what if I don't have a buff, but someone else does? Then you he will buff. give it to you. And yep. if, if your buddy who is like Mug Buffer Son two thousand, he has like all the That's buffs. That's the name of my squire. Yes. <laughs> Uh, he has all the buffs available to him, and you have literally none because you're just like Mug Newbie guy. You'll have all of the buffs that your buddy already has unlocked for himself. Yep. Will we have new cores in Lost Temple like new paths? 
what do you mean new cores? Like, well, new new cores so, open up. Okay, okay. Yeah. So the, to no. be ex to be explicit, like the the when new lanes open up, those lanes will always go to cores that are already active. So new cores may not be turned on. But the new lanes that open it will always go to the cores that you are already it'll, defending. It'll pick one of the currently yeah. active cores to go to. To go to, yes, correct. Let's see here. Are there any changes to multiplayer scaling or mob scaling as your party gets bigger? I don't mean, beyond, think beyond, so. Beyond, 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 we're using the same values that we've been using for Yeah, so those, those I mean, it's also same. Onslaught's completely different scaling. Period, mm -hmm. pretty much in general, in yeah. terms of in terms of enemies and the amounts that you get, we didn't even we forgot to mention on the Lost Temple, there can actually be way more enemies, oh, more yeah. than double the enemies on screen at one time than any other map, which oh. actually does increase the challenge too. Yeah, it's like there's way more enemies at a time you have to deal with, which is also really cool. <laughs> Do the waves increase the higher you go, like so, the more floors you are? So the number of waves stay the same no matter where you are in Onslaught. And to clarify, in Onslaught you'll play every and any map in the game alongside the Onslaught ex exclusive map, which is the Lost Temple. But all of them are going to be running under the same way that you've been used to, which is the five waves per map. And just to, just to clarify on the floor stuff, as the maps progress in a floor, it actually pulls its... Not fully random, but we've actually qualified all the maps into different difficulty pools. And it'll actually pull... Uh, all the maps are available. Even our Hot Springs map is available on Onslaught. Mm -hmm. It will show up. So, like, we've, we've literally grabbed the majority... Not all of our maps, but the majority of the maps. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, like Betsy's not going to show up for now oh, yeah. in Onslaught. For, for now. Oh. For now. For now. Did you say... Did you tell uh, that Hot Springs will be... He, I, just I just said that. Did you? Oh he man! Oh my gosh. man! Jesus! Yeah, Jose but is on, like, I, I'm just like. But to reiterate, <laughs> it will be. But to yeah. But so hot springs will be in onslaught. I'm so excited about it. I have to, I have to say it again. <laughs> but uh, so all the maps are in onslaught currently. Like all the all the regular maps, non-boss maps, um, and uh, you know incursion maps and that kind of stuff. They're all in onslaught. They will be semi-randomly rolling depending on the difficulty rating that we've kind of assigned to them. And then on a three floor, or three map floor, mm -hmm. the third map will oh, always be the new Lost Temple map. Mm -hmm. And the Lost Temple map, that's kind of like your checkpoint map. And then when you beat that, you've beaten the floor and you've like, you know, gotten that checkpoint. It's meant to be like a true test of challenge. So the longer maps will always end with the Onslaught map. So yeah, yep. like you said, if you beat that one, you're a boss. But the floors that are maybe like one or two maps, you know, could literally just be like one easy map mm -hmm. or like an easy map and maybe like a medium map, right? Like, you know, it's, it, you'll definitely see all the maps at some point as you're progressing through. Uh, will we be able to increase the 20 max point within Ascension? No, because those are pretty much uh, part of the core balance of the game. So the ones that max out of 20 are pretty much going to still be maxed out of 20. The good part about this is that whenever you trigger Ancient Power, your Ascension level, the base Ascension level that you start is going to raise. So yep. maybe you're going to be able to like be able to hit those like 20 ones right from the bat. So that will be... Yeah, depending on awesome. how much. Yeah, depending yeah, on how much. Depending on what your highest achieves are, you might be able to just have it from the get-go. Yeah. What is the Ancient Power floor? I think we already... It's 65. 65. Yeah. You have to complete 65. And uh, are all maps available to all floors? Yes. I mean, sort of. Sort so of. long. Yeah, it, it's tied to the number of uh, maps in that floor. So the, if you are playing maps, if you're playing floors with one map, the pool is different from the from the, from the floors that have one or two maps. But it's not like Trials where it was no, like no, five. No, 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 no. You know what I mean? No, it's there's yeah. like, the, you, yeah. through Onslaught, you will see every map that you are accustomed to through Trials mm -hmm. uh, and Campaign. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, I think this is going to be our last question, yep. which we've had planned, and then we've had it asked all week in celebration of this expansion. No. And the fact that you need no. ascension levels. No. Are we doing a double XP weekend? Jose, it's your call at this point. I mean, can we do like a 10%? XP weekend. That's like that's insane. They only they only get ten percent. Ten percent increase. That's uh, I'm, I'm, no no no. They get ten percent of what they're gonna. Yeah get. yeah. Oh yeah. We lower. It. Sure. By cut it by ninety yeah. percent. Um, well, in one minute we've got double XP weekend starting. Right at four o'clock Eastern. What? I guess. What? So, 
I didn't know this. You didn't know? I legit Oh, well, actually, I legit didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, really, I had no idea. Like, yeah. <laughs> I honestly had no idea we're doing this. Like, immediately, as soon as we're done, we're just going to go back and get some of the EXP grind. So, for real, get as many Ascension points as you can. No. You, will, you will get big boy gains from the first time that you gain Ancient Power with our new kind of like base Ascension level system. So it's definitely be worth it to blast out some XP before oh, yeah. the expansion launches. Uh, so the first time they gain ancient power, you'll have a big kickstart and kind of a head start over people that mm -hmm. you know kind of do the minimum and, and get to the minimum requirements and then do it. You'll have way higher gains than them, yeah, which is awesome. But it's also awesome just for current players, right? That a very high ascension for our players that have been playing a ton. You'll get a big boost, and it's kind of a reward for you know having played a lot of our game. And I know we've we've hinted at it in the past, like, maybe your Ascension points will be useful maybe. for something else later. Uh, this is what we've been talking about. No, like, this is why we're like, get Ascension levels, get Ascension gains. They're going to matter now. Uh, you know, it, in addition to, they mattered before, but right. like, they'll more matter now. Uh, you can get more power and push more floors of Onslaught, and it's going to be really awesome. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, any other uh, remaining questions? We're right at four. Dang, we're done. We, we crossed the finish line. Right? Know. So There's like not one ahead. last question. We, we could we could throw in another question. Let's see here. Uh, do, do, do. how will gating work? To, this is a big one. That's to, a big one. to prevent what? boosting people you, you, to you're higher like floors. The big boys question is like right <laughs> at the end, dude. You want, that's a big one to sign up on. So, I mean, uh, and uh, I'll I'll do half of it, and Colin will do the other half. <laughs> So through Onslaught, you can only join the, the floors that you have unlocked. And I, actually, actually now we bring it up, I, wanna, I, I do want to clarify something. So in Onslaught, when you essentially have your floor selected that you want to jump in, in the, in the war table, you'll be able to see every floor underneath that one. So you can join anybody who's playing underneath the floor that you have unlocked. On the session browser. On the session browser, correct. And you can only join, of course, like since we're not, we're not essentially encouraging people to like just essentially trample through a content and leech. You can only join so long as the first map in any given floor. So you'll be able to see all sessions open, and then if they're playing in the first floor, in the first map of that floor, you'll be able to jump right alongside them. But you cannot join any floors beyond the one that you have unlocked so far. Well, there'll be there's one floor like above you're essentially your next floor in progression. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you'll then be able to join those games because obviously it's like the next step in your progression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you'll be able to see that and everything below. But you won't be able to do like leapfrog skips in floors of progression. For now. Yeah. For now. For now. Can you go from campaign to end to? Yes, you can. Can you can go from campaign to C seven just playing an onslaught? Yeah, yeah. You can literally straight from. You don't even have to jump into trials if you don't want to. You can do all the progressions straight through you just get, onslaught. You get you gear want. and you get yeah. charts. You get all so the items you need. You get everything. There's different tiers of onslaught yeah. floors that will also unlock higher, different versions of trials as well. Yeah. yeah. So if you beat like comparable content in onslaught, it'll actually unlock the next trials for you too. If you want to go over into trials, you don't have to. But yeah. it's just. You know, you can progress in kind of either of them, and they'll unlock the appropriate level yeah. of the other one. If you, yeah, if you play Onslaught, and then if you reach a certain point, like you said, yeah. you'll unlock the appropriate Chaos difficulty. And if you play through Chaos, if you play enough of that Chaos, you'll unlock the appropriate floor in mm -hmm. Onslaught. So yeah. you can choose to either go up the ladder in either, which will also crank you up in the other one. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then the highest with Chaos Trial 7 unlocks which floor in like Onslaught. 55? 55. Yeah, 55. 55. I think it's 55. 55 sounds right. 55. But you gotta play a lot of Chaos yeah. 7. Yeah. If you play, if you grind Chaos 7, you'll unlock floor 55. Yep. So, I think that's it. And to clarify, oh no. If it's you're already not. a Chaos 7 player, you'll transition in at 55. Oh, yeah. yeah. There, there's like matching floors. When you transition to this patch, you won't have to like redo more trials right. to unlock things. It will just, it will unlock where you're at mm -hmm. currently Although, in kind of the onslaught progression. Although the correct way oh, will be to oh. make a new character and start from the beginning so you can enjoy onslaught in its entirety. Ooh, Ooh you could. Sweet. <laughs> I'll do that. All right. I'll I'm do about that. It. All right. I, I think guess that, that's about it for today. That's it for today. This new expansion launches Tuesday, December 12th. Ooh. Make sure Tuesday. your bodies are ready because, uh, I mean, I'm going to binge it. I don't know. Yeah. Probably. Let's make a lot I mean, of You might see me online trolling around some games. <laughs> and 
Don't hole smashing things. Don't, don't like, I don't even know. Don't troll. Why not? Uh, be nice. Oh, okay. I was still on Monday. We're gonna just do like a uh, everybody at the office is mandatory. It's our playing. dance party. Yeah, actually. we just, like dance have party. to force you to, to play onslaught. You have to dance and play onslaught yes, at the same time. At the yes. same time. Yeah, it's no big deal. And yeah. do bowling. So thanks for joining us today, guys. Uh, this has been your kind of power of the ancients preview dev stream uh we can't wait to see you guys in game on tuesday we're also going to be launching a new trailer coming out with the with the expansion release so we have a release trailer kind of showing the tail end of the story of how onslaught came to be in the world of etheria uh so it's going to be pretty sweet and also show off some of the new rewards and stuff that you can get so be looking out for that and we can't wait to see you guys in game all right Bye. bye